Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Welcome back. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to do something that I'm calling my powder shootout, in which I'll be comparing six of my favorite powders using a Hornady 52 grain boat tail hollow point bullet. And I'll be testing each of these doing a ladder run with velocities from 3,000 to 3,200 feet per second. In order from the slowest burning powder to the fastest burning powder, We'll be shooting CFE 223, Varget, H335, Accurate 2460, IMR 3031, and Accurate 2200. We will take these in order week by week and we will post the results so you can see exactly which powders perform with these bullets. Welcome to part one of my powder shootout. We're starting today with CFE 223 and I'll be shooting charge weights from 26.2 grains to 27.4 grains of CFE 223. This is the slowest burning powder, and the slower the powder, the higher the charge weights tend to be. But we'll be shooting at velocities of 3,000 feet per second to 3,200 feet per second based on the values published in the Hornady Reloading Manual. So as always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can skip forward to the results at the end. Shooting at 100 yards. All right, let's go. All right, I didn't see a huge difference in how these shot, but let's bring them in and take a look. All right, these all look fairly similar. This looks like a pretty tight group here to start with. These were stringing vertically for some strange reason. And then these began shooting to the right as the charge weight increased. They began to shoot more to the right. And I'm sure that that's due to the torquing of the barrel. We had a flyer here, but otherwise a pretty tight group here. Pretty tight group here with a couple of flyers here. These were somewhat scattered, but it looks like the 26.2 grains was my best load here. This was my fouling group. I first shot... Here, here, and here, I believe, and I adjusted it one click to the right. Then I shot here and here and had a flyer here. All right, so we'll take these home and measure them with the Hornady 4 DOS Ballistics app using the group analysis function, and we will see how they do. All right, stay tuned. All right, here are my results from the range. And this is the first installment of the powder shootout 
that I'm doing where I'm comparing six different powders with a Hornady 52 grain boat tail hollow point bullet. And I'm shooting these at velocities between 3,000 and 3,200 feet per second. The CFE 223 powder is number 115 out of 170 powders listed on the burn scale in the Hornady 11th edition reloading manual. That means there's 170 powders tested, and of these, they were number 115 in the burn rate chart, and that's listed from fastest to slowest. So that means that there's 55 other powders listed that are slower than the CFE 223, but there's also 114 powders that are faster than the CFE 223. And in some of the future videos that I'll be posting, we will be looking at some of those faster powders, which include uh, Varget, Accurate 2460, Accurate 2200, H335, and IMR 3031, to name a few. So let's get into this one. I'm shooting uh, 10 shot groups. The reason I choose 10 shot groups is I think that gives me a good indication of how the rifle and the ammo are performing. And there are those three elements, the rifle, the ammo, and the shooter. And I'm gonna perform how I'm gonna perform, but uh, I can look at the rifle and the ammo. And I think 10 shots gives me a pretty good indication. And so with this powder, we had charge weights ranging from 26.2, and I'll give you a closer look here, to 27.4 grains of powder. 26.2 was not the starting load, but that's the load for 3,000 feet per second. And 26.1 had shot pretty well with a 55 grain full metal jacket bullet. It had a really tight group and a, like a 0.29 mean radius. So I started at 26.2 regardless because that's what's shown in the book for 3,000 feet per second for that 52 grain boat tail. Okay, to start off with, let's look at these as a whole. And I've measured all of these groups with the Hornady Fordoff Ballistics app using their group analysis function. So by each individual target, I'll show you the group analysis photo as well. So we start off and this red cross corresponds to the white X on the photograph from the Hornady app. And there's a white dotted line uh, designating the extreme spread. And of course, their information is up here in the upper left hand corner if you want to uh, look at that. But we start off and we're shooting pretty much on center. Now, I shot a warming group first and I did adjust the scope two clicks up so that it would shoot a little bit higher. So I wanted the scope centered higher so that I don't destroy my point of impact. I'm more concerned about it being uh, horizontally correct than I am vertically correct because I'm intentionally shooting these high and they do all shoot high. In fact, they range from 0.94 to 0.53 to 0.35 to 0.83 to 0.52. So on average, that's right at about a half an inch between uh, those measurements. So we're shooting just about a half inch high on average. And we're pretty much on target here uh, with our first group. We're shooting slightly to the right. Then we're almost zeroed. When we go to 26 and a half grains, we're all almost zeroed. Then it begins shooting further to the right. As we increase our charge weight, that point of impact goes further to right. 0 0.61, 0 0.56, and 0.66. But staying pretty consistent. But I think what's happening here is the char as the charge weight increases, the barrel is torquing and it's causing that point of impact to shift. So it's moving that point of impact because what's happening is that bullet is wanting to stay straight, but the rifling in the barrel is causing it to twist. And as that bullet is twisting, it's also exerting force on that barrel because the bullet wants to stay straight, but it's being forced to twist. So it's also causing that barrel to twist as it travels down through the rifling. Now, the, the more stable your barrel is, the better off you are, but there's going to be some torquing and twisting regardless, and it makes sense that as I increase the charge weight, we see that torquing uh, and twisting increase as well. We also see an increase in the 
uh, point of impact, and that's due to velocity. Here it looks like um, I was probably shooting more to the right than I was shooting high, like that barrel may have been twisting more with this charge and pulling my shots towards the right. We'll look at these one by one. All right, so let's take a look at our first group. We're shooting at 26.2 grains. We have a really tight group here, so uh, we keep it under an inch with 10 shots, which I'm always pleased with that. So our extreme spread was 0.86 inches, but our mean radius was 0.35 inches. And of course, a radius is half of a circle, so if you double that number, you get 0.70. So that means that with 10 shots, I have an average group size of 0.7 inches. So hitting a one inch target at 100 yards, you've got almost 100% chance of that. So the ammo and the rifle will perform. The rest is going to be up to the shooter. All right, at 26 and a half grains, we're traveling at 3,050 feet in velocity, according to what the book says. The average point of impact is right here. It's pretty much right on center with the vertical center of the target. In fact, it's only two hundredths of an inch over. Horizontally, it's half an inch above at 0.53. But our group size, we had an extreme spread from here to here of 1.22 inches. So that's right at it, just under an inch and a quarter. And our mean radius was 0.42 which is still respectable. There's probably a 90% chance that you would hit a one inch target with that. Your mean radius is 0.42, so you double that, that gives you an average group size of 0.8 inches on 10 shots. Moving on to 26.8 inches, the gun begins shooting to the right. We have an average center of impact at 0.61 inches to the right and vertically 0.35 above the point of aim so it's actually dropping down some now so i think that's the barrel twisting and torquing because when you look here we're shooting high and center now we're shooting lower and to the right so it's like that barrel is twisting towards the right we've got a one and a quarter inch extreme spread here and a mean radius of 0.38 so even though you've got a one and a quarter inch group size your average group size is going to be double that, so that would be 0.76. All right, moving on to target number four. We're at 27.1 grains of powder, and we're traveling at 3,165 feet per second. We've got an extreme spread of 1.29 inches and a mean radius of 0 0.40 inches, which gives us an average group size of 0.8 inches. And I see that we're still shooting to the right. 56 hundredths of an inch and 83 hundredths of an inch above the point of aim. And of course, we started there above the point of aim to begin with because that's where we had the rifle sighted in. So we're still right where we need to be. We're right on target as far as uh, vertical, but we're going a little bit to the right horizontally. At 27.4 grains of powder, and the reason that it's 27.4, I know we were loading from 3,000 to 3,200. What we're doing here is we're going in three grain increments. So, so we start off at 26.2, then we go to 0 0.5, 27.1, 0.4. So I'm jumping in three grain increments here to be as even and consistent as possible. So that's still pretty darn close to 3,200 feet per second. So a worthy comparison. So here, at 3,229 feet per second, we're shooting 66 hundredths of an inch to the right, two thirds of an inch basically, and a half an inch high. So that still, again, is right at my point of aim from where the rifle was sighted in. So vertically, it's still shooting well. We've got an extreme spread from here to here of 1.34 inches, but we've got a mean radius of 0.46 inches. So that gives you an average group size of drum roll please and that gives you an average group size of 0.92 inches all right so we've gone from 26.2 to 27.4 grains of cfe 223 and the groups did not improve in fact the groups continued to get bigger and bigger so we started out at 0.86 went to 122 125 129 
and 134. So each subsequent group opened up as far as the extreme spread. The mean radius uh, was sort of consistent, but it did open up somewhat at the uh, higher charge weight. So it started out at 35, then went to 42, back down to 38, then to 40, then to 46. So at the higher charge weights, it seems like the, um, the groups begin to scatter some. But where we can still explore, though, is on the other side of this 3,000, because we know that 3,000 shot a one-inch group with 10 shots. But what about a lighter charge weight? What if we go just a little bit lower on that and explore that? So that's worth looking into. But I'm going to continue on the powder shootout. So, so far, it looks like for the CFE 223, 26.2 grains is the winner at this point. So hope you find this information helpful. Next, we'll be shooting Varget powder. Varget is a slightly faster powder than CFE 223, but it's still considered to be a slow powder. All right, so we'll look at that next time up. All right, if you have any questions or comments, please post those below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.